this one's going to be about what to make. in digital art. Um, we all have some idea of what digital art is built up in our head um, and we can talk about that forever. Now the way I see it is um, digital art is a tool, right? And it, like any tool, like a hammer, it has to be used for some kind of end or purpose, right? Um, so that gives you so much freedom because we, in this course, are focused on how to use the tool and we don't have to focus on the end. Um, so what this is literally going to be is an open-ended course. It is very much closed in terms of the tools that we are going to use, but in terms of what to make with it, that's up to you. The way that I see it, there are five, maybe six, basic images. You have objects, right? Very simple. An object could be a sculpture, like that. An object could be a chair, like that. Um, it could be a radio. Um, and you could spend your time painting and drawing objects or designing them uh, to be made. And the end of that doesn't necessarily matter. You have architecture, for instance, you could um, design, paint, or draw any sort of architecture that you wanted. Um, could be something like this. You could make a painting of that, you could make a drawing of that, you could make an architectural rendering of that, or you could invent your own particular bit of architecture. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter to me what end that you want to create. The other potential that you have is um, life or figures. The way I see that is, you know, you could do uh, fashion or costume design um, and that would be part of like part of figures you could do prop design or whatever that you whatever whatever you wanted you could do portrait painting or portrait drawing or portrait sketching that's all fine um, you could also do landscapes And that can take many different forms, right? You could um, look at, you know, roadways. This is taken from the passenger seat, don't worry. You could um, look at snowscapes, paint those, um, draw those, make digital versions. They can look like cartoons, they can look realistic, they can look hyper realistic like photographs for a digital matte painting. It doesn't matter. So. Those, I think, are the, the four most basic. Um, the other one is abstraction. You can create any kind of abstraction that you want and play around with abstract qualities and flatness. Um, to me, that's totally fine. That actually covers a lot of ground. And um, the other one is text. Text, I think, overlaps um, graphic design too much. So I think in this course, we're gonna stay away from text um, and focus on like any of these five. These are some examples that I've done in the digital art space that are really just sketches, nothing super developed, but give you an idea of potentially where you could take this. So this is a pattern that I've lifted off of a photograph I took of a spider um, and then I took that pattern and modified it a little bit and made it into a repeated pattern. So that I could use as part of an abstract painting. I could use it as a textile design. Um, I could, and that textile design could be then integrated into a 
fashion illustration or a fashion sketch. Or if I'm an interior designer, I could use that as like drapery, curtains, um, you know, towels, whatever. The end isn't as important. Um, what's important is, is that we're using the tools, right? So that would be part of, um, you know, I guess under the category of abstraction, right? Even though it's based on something real. And it's um, possible to just do all of these digital techniques and just do repeated patterns. Um, if you wanted to go into textile design, that's totally fine with me. You could use that as um, uh, part of a way to then take these patterns and paste them into, into fashion sketches like this one. And these are just life sketch practices that I was doing, um, looking at some Japanese street style images. You know, they're not my original design. If you're a, a fashion designer, like you could do sketches like this, integrate repeated patterns into these and change the patterns that are on all of these like sketched out garments and shapes, right? Because these are all done, you know, more or less as flat shapes. If I turn that layer off, right? I could go in, I could select any of these shapes. I could put that pattern on there. Here's another example. I painted um, this based off a of reference photo that, uh, that somebody took in, uh, in the uh, Warrior Painters group. Um, it's a cathedral, I think in Barcelona or something. And I just spent a lot, a lot of time painting it. Um, and it's an architectural kind of painting. It's a little street scene, there's people, there's some plants. So it's a little bit of a mixture, right? There's objects because they're little cars and so on, but largely it's architectural, right? Um, this is distinctly an object uh, painting. So this is a sketch that I did, um, and all I did was paint in the shadows as basically black areas. It's called a noton, uh, a single value sketch. You'll notice that this has a lot in common with comic books. Um, if I started putting um, colored areas in there uh, to kind of fill in the color, you would really get the feel of, of comic books. And if you understand this method, you'll really be able to work with comics very easily. This is a landscape sketch. And actually what I did for this one was kind of fun. I had um, an actual sketch and um, let's see. So this is what the sketch looked like. I scanned that sketch, then I painted on top of the sketch um, and under the sketch. So I kept it in multiply blend mode and a little bit transparent so I could see where the lines were. And then at the end, turned it off. So I'm left with a quick digital painting done on top of a sketch that I did. Uh, and this is of Mount Whitney. Um, so you could make, a, you could use the tools to make an, an image kind of like that. So another thing too is this is a different end. So I did this, um, did this sketch on the left, which is an abstraction, of course, and it's based on the idea of a membrane um, where you know something covers something else and other things show through and Maybe there's a little biological um, entities in there in this sort of soft space. And then what I did was I decided that that should be an actual painting. And I could scale that up and adapt it to the actual size and materials and make a painting that's very similar to that. Um, so this, so the, the digital art took, took a role as a preparatory tool to do an actual physical painting. So whatever you want to do as far as the end in, is okay with me, as long as you're using the digital tools to get there.